It's my pleasure to be here. Um, I work in Baidu's uh, global business unit and I do marketing for our international markets outside of China. Um, right now we have a presence in uh, Brazil, Indonesia, Thailand and Egypt. Um, we have offices in those countries. We also have an office in uh, Japan as well, um, although that doesn't really fall under the umbrella of uh, emerging markets. That's more developed. Um, and our product family right now um, on the PC side includes uh, Baidu Antivirus, Baidu PC Faster. Um, we have a browser called Baidu Browser. We have um, a web portal called How123 that's uh, done very well in um, Egypt and also, of course, in China. Um, and on the, um, on the mobile side, um, we've recently introduced an app marketplace um, called Mobile Market. And it's doing, it's doing quite well worldwide. Um, actually, all of our mobile products combined have a combined MAU of over 210 uh, million globally. Um, so our mobile product family, I'll just give a little bit more background. Uh, aside from mobile market, uh, which is predominantly focused on Indonesia and India, um, we have two utility apps called Do Battery Saver and Do Speed Booster. Uh, each of those has over 150 million downloads uh, globally. We have um, an, another utility app for Android called ES File Explorer, which is a file explorer app, basically a file manager. Uh, and we also have um, a keyboard uh, in Japanese language for the Japan market called Simiji. And that, that's performing quite well in Japan. Sure, one of the most uh, pertinent themes, I think, for Baidu is being able to recognize the importance of forming a local ecosystem and a local brand and seeking out uh, meaningful partnerships uh, with partners on the ground in these emerging markets um, who really understand the local environment better than we do. I mean, Baidu is, we are a Chinese company. Um, it's, it's in our DNA and um, we can't presume to have a, a broad understanding of every market outside of China. However, uh, there are some certain uh, similarities between emerging markets and we can bring our expertise and in a sense um, uh, basically bring our expertise from our understanding of operating within China over the past 15 years and apply it in certain cases to countries outside of China that are emerging and in a lot of ways look similar to how China looked about five years ago. Um, one example as a case study is that of uh, Pace Urbano, which is Brazil's uh, biggest homegrown group buying platform. So last year, October uh, 2014, we actually acquired them. And this was a strategic um, acquisition in Brazil to basically bolster our capabilities locally. Um, the advantage for us is that they understand the culture, um, the linguistic differences, um, people's buying habits there. Uh, th those are things that we, we can't claim to necessarily understand, so we need people to help us in that regard. And of course, they also had the local network set up um, of, of their own partners. Um, for our part, uh, what we can bring to this is a, a deep understanding of the development of the entire O2O ecosystem in China and apply that experiential knowledge uh, to this case in Brazil. Actually, last year, um, in the second half of last year, our mobile search volume overtook our PC search volume domestically within China. And our mobile platforms within China are also performing very well, so we made the shift to becoming a mobile-first company. Um, and that's a strategic decision, uh, not only inside China, but also it applies to our strategy in emerging markets outside of China. Um, within China, I think everyone knows that, uh, or anyone inside mobile knows, that e-commerce is a huge deal. Uh, actually, the entire e-commerce industry in China is valued at over two trillion uh, U.S. dollars. I think um, you can you can check that figure, but 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 I believe it's two trillion. And um, recently, basically, uh, all the big players in China, um, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent, as well as some other tech companies, have created their own e-wallet systems um, to facilitate um, e-commerce within China. Um, and the big movement for us is now O2O. Um, we have what we call a super app. Um, this is basically uh, our Baidu app as a platform which supports many different O2O verticals. It has uh, movie purchasing, movie ticket purchasing, it has uh, food delivery, um, it has um, car services, Uber, um, who we formed a strategic partnership with last year, um, as well as others. Um, Tencent also has a similar one through WeChat. Um, you can pay your electricity bill, for example, uh, through their platform and through Tencent's wallet. Um, but getting back to the point at hand, um, 
O2O and having many different O2O verticals combined into a single platform has been an extremely successful um, strategy within China. And it's worked very well for Baidu. Um, to give you an idea of just how streamlined this process is for a user, you can actually open the app on your phone, the Baidu app. You can select your route to the theater, so by public transportation, private car, or you can book an Uber. Um, you can buy your movie ticket, and then you can even choose the seats that you want to sit in, all from your phone. And the entire transaction is carried out through Baidu Wallet. So this is an example of the end-to-end -end streamlined, you know, vertical O2O ecosystem. There's a lot of words, but basically this, this describes it, that we're trying to, um, that we envision as the future of emerging markets other than China. Um, this, is, this is a success story that, that we think we'd like to replicate.